Layer the battlefield with infectious clouds that quickly fell your enemies as they succumb to the massive harmful stacks and direct damage that results. Through a combination of passive procs, automatic dot or damage over time stacks, and the ability to spread your debuffs to additional targets, this baneful hero deals massive damage while withstanding pretty much anything thrown its way. This is the Poison Warlock for Last Epoch, and it's a build that continues to get better as you level higher, allowing you to use it early and continue through the endgame with it as well. There are no required unique items, only some that will increase the output of the build, and we'll discuss those throughout the video. The gameplay is simple, you're going to cast Spirit Plague, use your Fissure, and then you're going to spam Chaos Bolts. Chaos Bolts will refresh the duration of your curses on the target. In addition to that, it will actually increase the active time on your Fissure. As for the green cloud around the character, well, that's Ore of Decay. Ore of Decay is unlocked by putting 10 points in the Lich Passive Tree. In fact, we're going to put a lot more points here. We'll continue putting points into Desolation, followed by Lasting Stench, and then we'll pick up all the nodes in the final section of the Lich Tree that we have access to. All said and done, we'll have nearly as many points in the Lich Tree as we do the Warlock tree and that's because this is actually a warlock lich hybrid build by selecting warlock as the mastery we'll get increased damage per curse on the target as mentioned we're running a pair of these so this is a nice damage boost to the build we also get access to fisher which is the mastery skill that you gain and we can't have otherwise the increased necrotic resistance is a nice bonus if you happen to be playing the low light version if not it still adds some resistance and overall defensive stats to your character this doesn't need to be played as a low light build i have one set up in the video here just so you can see that it can be the choice is ultimately yours but there are some additional passive points that you can select that will increase the the damage output of this build even more if you play a low light version. Blood Pack, Dance with Death, and also Aspect of Death are all right for the picking if you want to set this character up to take advantage of those nodes. This build will still have a lot of survivability just from the increased maximum health and the regen that is provided through the specialization trees. Spiteful Decay and Malefic Body are just a couple of talents that are increase your damage output and your survivability as well, so again, you don't have to play low life if you'd prefer not to. Aside from simply increasing the damage that we deal to cursed targets, Spirit Plague will also inflict the debuff plague. This will give you another source of poison damage aside from the normal poison debuff. It'll gain additional poison penetration and on top of that you'll gain increased poison damage which can stack up to 13 times. This is a tremendous boost to our main source of damage. The fissure converted to poison will also deal damage over time that it leeches his health and helps your survivability as well. On top of that it'll deal more damage to bosses or rares while inflicting acid skin which is another poison debuff dealing a third source of damage over time in the form of poison damage. The reality of this build is you can actually run around the enemies and just let Ore of Decay apply poison stacks, and that's enough to actually kill the enemies over time. However, if we want to be more efficient, then we're going to use our other abilities. Open with your Spirit Plague, and then you'll follow up with the Fissure. If the enemies happen to still be alive, then you'll start spamming Chaos Bolts. Alternatively, if the enemies are lower life types, then you can just cast Spirit Plague, followed by Chaos Bolts, and everything will melt. You may have noticed by now that we have Transplant on the bar or Loadout as well, and this is for additional mobility. This is an unspecialized skill, so it's simply the baseline. It actually costs health to use instead of mana. The fifth specialized skill is Soul Feast and this will actually have the ability to proc while we have Aura of Decay active. When we get hit from enemies, we have an increasing chance for this to proc. The benefits of having Soul Feast are going to include more chance to poison enemies, and we're also going to gain a large amount of ward from rares or bosses, so it just adds to our survivability, and since this procs automatically, it makes the playstyle of the build really friendly. As you can see, this character is level 67, and the reason I'm making this video at this point is because there's a tremendous lack of poison warlock builds and just poison builds in general for last epoch, so I hope you appreciate this build coming out early. I will make an updated version this build as well as this character reaches higher level and I'll continue to update the build planner in the video description that way you can see any changes that I've made to the build in the meantime. As you progress towards the end game here's some items that you can keep an eye out. Two of them Exsanguinous and also Last Steps of the Living are a pair you may have seen in other builds. They'll both remove current health and replace it with ward per second. That'll help you achieve a setup that you see down here. Another really nice piece for this particular build is Bone Clamor Barber. This is going to give you additional ward per second per uncapped necrotic resistance. The term uncapped actually just means total necrotic resistance. That's particularly useful for this build because you get 40 necrotic resistance from Forbidden Knowledge in the Acolyte Tree, and on top of that, your Warlock Mastery gives you 35 necrotic resistance as well. Makes it really easy to add this additional ward from that item. The setup will also benefit from a lot of lower level items, meaning they'll be a little bit easier to find, and you also may have some luck with rolling some legendary potential on them as well. Getting a chance to poison and also additional poison spells will benefit this build in order of your specialization skills. Viper Tail is another example of where you could get additional chance to poison on hit and just have some sources of this, that way you can keep stacks going while you're fighting higher health enemies. Rot Mind is a great catalyst if you happen to find one. Again, only level 31 required, so hopefully you can pick one of these up fairly easy, but the combination of these items all being low level will all give you a better chance of rolling that legendary potential and making them even stronger. For transparency, a lot of these items do have legendary potential, but you can see that I didn't actually use any of it on the items. I wanted to make this build possible for other players as they got to this point in the game. As mentioned, I'll be making an updated version of this build to help you along the way and progress through the endgame steadily as well. 
Ladle. At that point, I'll be using this legendary potential and take the build to the next level. Mad Alchemist Ladle is also a great item for this build if you can find one. Chance to slow is going to prevent enemies from getting you. Frailty is going to reduce the damage that you take. Shred Armor will increase the damage that the enemies take. Increased chance to poison on hit will just further the stacks that you build. Increased spell damage per negative ailment on the target up to 8 and we can easily hit 8 of these stacks. The increased cast speed per intelligence which we can easily scale and the mana gained on potion use are all useful for this build. If you can't find one of these, look for a well-rolled exalted item, and this can be any one-hander that you could pair with either a catalyst or even a shield, or alternatively, you can even use a lot of two-handers with this build as well. For any of the slots you don't have unique items, look for well-rolled rares or even exalted items. Getting things like increased poison damage, increased mana regeneration, or even resist that you may be lacking can be really nice for the build. In the example of this amulet shown here, you're actually getting four resists, two physical and necrotic from the implicit, fire and cold from the suffixes. So look for items like this that can help really maximize those values. Salt the Wound is a great item as well. So increase your critical strike multiplier, which is then converted to poison penetration for this build. You also get increased damage over time and poison and duration from the implicit. Look to fill out your resist by using the idle slots, and whenever you can sneak one in, look for an idle like this, where you can get increased poison damage while Aura of Decay is active, and increased poison damage overall. As you can see throughout the video, Aura of Decay is actually active 100% of the time. We can make this skill add additional stacks or apply them more frequently, however you want to make sure that you're a balance point, meaning that the number of stacks you're acquiring doesn't deplete your health quicker than you can sustain, so allow you to keep 100% uptime on the ability. and then use Chaos Bolts. The Chaos Bolts will refresh Spirit Plague, and you only need to recast Fissure as the boss moves or every so often. Transplant is needed to avoid incoming damage. The playstyle is really smooth, and although it's better on keyboard and mouse, it's not awful on controller. Although, you will occasionally miss your Spirit Plague if you choose to use the controller. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.